Hi there and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series. And in this video, we're going to take a high level overview of all the different services that you can actually find in the IBM Cloud. So I'm going to break this into different parts because there's obviously quite a lot of services to get through. And the services that we're going to cover in this particular video are going to be the compute services, the container services, and also the networking services. Now, one thing to bear in mind as, you, as you're watching this video is that these services do change quite frequently. So it's, this is one of those videos that potentially could, um, could fall out of date um, fairly quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you each of these services uh, within the catalog. So again, if you want to see what services are actually available on IBM Cloud, then the best place always to, uh, to, to research that is to actually go to the catalog within, within IBM Cloud. Okay, so let's go and uh, let's go and explore some of these services. Okay, so here I am in my IBM Cloud account at cloud.ibm.com, and in fact, I've actually come straight into the into the catalog, so you can access the catalog by clicking this button here. But don't worry, there's going to be a um, a video later on in the series which explains the catalog in a bit more detail, how to navigate it and how to use it. Okay, so the first thing you might notice is that there's actually 179 items in the catalog today as I'm recording this. So obviously this is, uh, you know, there's, there's lots and lots of services. It's very comprehensive. So chances are, if there's something that you want to do in IBM Cloud, there's a service in here that will actually help you to do it. So one, so there's a couple of things I'm going to do. I'm obviously going to go through um, each of the services. I'm, I'm not going to go through all 179, um, but I'm going to go through each of the services, give you a bit of a high level overview of each of them, just to get you familiar with what they are. And, and what they do. And I'm actually going to break this down into, into several videos. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, you, you'll see that there are IBM and their third party provider uh, provided um, services in here. So there's 63 third party services in here. So I'm not going to talk about the third party services. I'm just going to talk about the IBM provided services. So I'm going to just check that box there. And for this particular video, we're going to just concentrate on the compute the containers and the networking. So let's kick off with compute and let's just quickly talk through these. Okay, so first up we have a virtual server for VPC. So VPC stands for Virtual Private Cloud. So these are um, virtual servers, virtual machines, x86 machines that will actually run in Virtual Private Cloud. So these are machines that are running uh, Linux operating systems and Windows operating systems. So they're the normal kind of virtual machines that you might want to run applications on, but these ones are specially for VPC. Next up, we have a Power Systems Virtual Server. So there'll be a video on this later on in the series. Um, and uh, basically, if you want to run things on something like IBM AIX, so a Unix operating system, or IBM I, then you can do that in the cloud. You can bring those workloads into the cloud using Power Systems Virtual Server. So what you do is you create a Power Systems Virtual Server environment and then create your AIX or IBM I machines in that environment. I think you can also run um, some Power Linux servers on that as well. But again, we'll have a video on that later on in the series. Next up, HyperTech uh, Virtual Server. So again, this is a specially built, um, hardened, secure server based on Linux One. So again, if you've got some uh, really, um, got some workloads that you need to have a highly secure environment for, then take a look at the HyperTech Virtual Server. Again, we'll try and take a look at that later on in the series. Next, we've got virtual servers. So these are the virtual servers that run in the IBM Classic infrastructure. And uh, there are uh, videos later on in the series to cover all of the, the virtual servers for, for Classic. So again, these are virtual machines which run on uh, which run Linux, various flavors of Linux and Windows. But these actually run outside of the virtual private cloud environment. So it was a, an important distinction there. Next up, we have bare metal servers. So uh, with our bare metal server offering, what you're actually getting here is a dedicated server um, just for you, just for your use in the account. So, so this is dedicated to your use. So you can kind of call it a private server. And again, it will either come with a with a uh, with a flavor of an operating system on, so be it Linux, Windows, and a few others as well. Or you can actually take the bare metal server and install your own operating system on it. So these are really great for where you need uh, the dedicated raw power of a virtual of a bare metal server. Uh, or when you've got um, uh, maybe some licensing implications uh, where you actually need to have control over the full physical server. Next up, we have um, our VMware solutions. So we'll probably talk about those, or there are videos later on talking about the VMware services that we offer. So again, this is the, uh, the compute that actually underpins uh, our VMware uh, solutions. So again, if you've got VMware workloads that are running on-premises, 
and uh, you actually want to burst into the cloud or take advantage of um, uh, of um, cloud economies of scale and, all, and elasticity and all the rest of it, then our VMware solutions are a really good place to start. So next we have serverless compute, and we have um, uh, we have our functions offering for serverless compute. So this is really where you're writing um, code um, or functions as a service. So this is code which effectively um, uh, you, you create and you and it then gets stored and it's effectively triggered and executed um, uh, within the cloud. So as a developer, you don't need to worry about what, uh, what compute is sitting underneath it. The cloud automatically allocates compute. It allocates memory to run the function. Uh, and uh, basically, you're not paying for underlying server hardware. You're just paying for the, the time that it takes for the function to, uh, to actually execute. So again, if you're writing things like microservices, uh, and you, you don't really want to have a, a server hanging around uh, all the time, then take a look at functions. It, it's, it's, a, it's a really powerful offering. Next, we have Cloud Foundry. So Cloud Foundry is, a, is another great environment for actually developing applications. So uh, what it provides is a, um, is a, a, a different runtimes, so different um, application development runtimes. There's a whole flavor of them. Uh, so basically, developers can get on and code. Again, they don't have to actually worry about the underlying infrastructure. So the compute uh, is, is already there. Um, all the developer really needs to worry about is, is writing code. Um, they need to be concerned with how many instances of the application they want to be running. Uh, and also the amount of memory uh, that is actually de uh, devoted to each of those instances as well. But again, from a developer's point of view, you don't need to worry about the actual underlying server hardware. Uh, the compute is all there for you. So again, Cloud Foundry, great platform. The next thing we have is a, a WebSphere application server. So again, if you're using WebSphere or you want to use WebSphere, then by choosing this option, what you're effectively getting is an application server in your account ready to go with WebSphere installed. Okay, so let's move on to containers. Okay, so the first service here is our Kubernetes service. So if you want to run uh, containers on Kubernetes, then it's really easy to do that in the IBM Cloud. Effectively, what you do is you uh, provision a, a cluster. So that's uh, some, some hardware, it can be virtual machines, it can be bare metal servers, um, which IBM then take and they actually then uh, create a, a, a Kubernetes uh, clustered environment for you. So again, that's a really powerful environment and a, a, a fully managed Kubernetes service, which just allows you to get on and, and uh, deploy your containers and manage them. Next, we have a Red Hat OpenShift. So again, very similar to Kubernetes. This is a, a something to run container workloads on, but OpenShift has a much, uh, a much enriched uh, environment for developers to actually use and actually start to use and deploy container services much, much more quickly. So again, you choose the hardware that um, that uh, the OpenShift actually runs on, be it virtual servers or, um, or um, bare metal servers. And IBM then takes that, creates the Red Hat OpenShift environment for you. So you all you need to do is just get on and deploy your, uh, deploy your containers and start building other applications around it. Okay, so next up we have the container registry, and this is really, a, a, I guess, a storage environment for actually con uh, storing containers. So um, you can uh, so, so once you've created a container, you can upload it to the container registry into a particular namespace, and you can then pull that uh, container from the registry to deploy onto your Kubernetes service or, or your Red Hat OpenShift service. Now, the other great thing about the container registry service is that there's some uh, vulnerability scanning uh, for containers actually built into it. So when it uh, when you load a container in there, uh, the scanning tools will automatically look at the container and then just flag up anything in there, such as um, maybe out of date um, uh, code code version, environment versions, that kind of thing, and notify that to you as well. So it's great for um, securely storing your containers, but also um, giving you a bit of a vulnerability information as well. Okay, so next we're going to look at networking. So um, first of all, we've got networking within our VPC, so within the virtual private cloud. So first of all, we have DNS services. So if you need to uh, create the name name services within uh, within virtual private cloud, then the DNS service uh, for VPC is is where to do that. Uh, we then have load balancers for VPC. So these are virtual load balancers which uh, span across um, different zones within regions. Um, so you can actually load balance your applications 
as they sit within IBM Cloud. And again, more videos on that later. Uh, we then have Virtual Private Cloud itself. So if you actually want to create a virtual private cloud, the first thing you need to do is, um, is actually use this service just to create the virtual private cloud and, and it then walks you through the, through the process of setting that up for you. And then we have a VPN for VPC. So what this allows you to do is uh, create a virtual private network over the internet between your site and, uh, and, and our VPC over a VPN. So again, you can, it can either be to your site, it can be to different clouds, but basically what you're getting here is a virtual private network uh, which connects into VPC. Okay, then we have um, some networking edge um, services. So the first one here is a content delivery network. So a content delivery network or CDN um, basically allows you to distribute um, content um, around the globe. So if, for instance, you're running a website and uh, you've got lots of maybe um, graphics in there, lots of pictures, or even you've, if you've got you know a, a quite a lot of static content, then what you can use is a is a content delivery network to store those static elements, so that um, so that the the content is then served uh, to the user from from a location that's much closer to them. Next, we have a service called Internet Services. Now, again, this is quite important if you're again, developing uh, especially websites and things like that on IBM Cloud. So Internet Services um, is underpinned by um, software from Cloudflare. And uh, what this actually provides you with is, is a whole range of different services, such as DNS. It also gives you a global load balancer, so you can load balance across services which are deployed around the globe. It offers things like DDoS protection, so distributed denial of service attack protection. Uh, web application files and so on and so on. So there's quite a lot of services in here. Again, there's a video later on in the series which actually talks about internet services in greater detail. But again, if you're running a website and you want a greater protection or greater performance for that website, then internet services is a great service for you to look at. We then have the IPsec v VPN service. So again, this allows you to create a VPN between your premises or another cloud. Uh, into uh, into the IBM cloud, so into your into your account and into your environment, and this actually allows you to then manage all the servers and serv services um, available with your account over a private network. Uh, then we have some interconnectivity tools. So um, so the first one is Direct Link dedicated. So this is like Direct Link version two. There's a few more Direct Link services um, underneath which you can see, um, and what this uh, effectively gives you is um, some dedicated. Um, links between your premises or different clouds uh, into the IBM network uh, so that you can actually then use services, so use applications over direct link. Um, so you're effectively going over a dedicated line. So um, so this is quite important if you're if you're running, say let's say, you know, large business applications over the cloud, because it gives you uh, a more um, a more dedicated line. And, and also um, it enhances the quality of service over that line. So, so you get more sort of dedicated bandwidth because you're not going over the internet. Okay, and then we have Transit Gateway. And Transit Gateway is actually a means to actually connect uh, all of your different services within IBM Cloud. So for example, if you have multiple virtual private clouds, by default, they can't actually talk to one another and they can't actually talk to classic infrastructure either. So by, imp uh, by implementing a Transit Gateway, that means that you can then allow different VPCs and also classic infrastructure to actually can communicate and talk to one another. Again, there'll be videos on this later on in the series. Next, we have um, our networking services, classic infrastructure. So classic infrastructure is effectively any infrastructure that is outside of virtual private cloud. So first up, we have load balancers. So again, load balancers will distribute load across different virtual machines or bare metal servers. So we've got a whole um, series of, of load balancer offerings for classic infrastructure. Then we have um, uh, another four uh, direct link um, offerings. Next, we have uh, different security appliances. So uh, the FortiGate security appliance. If you're looking for a, for a, for a hardware firewall, firewall with uh, you know uh, granular control over over access, then take a look at the FortiGate security appliance. Uh, we also have um, other hardware appliances, another hardware firewall, uh, and also a dedicated hardware firewall as well. So, so again, different firewall offerings are, are available within our, within IBM Cloud. So again, if you're looking for firewalling for classic infrastructure, uh, we'll take a closer look at some of these options later on in the series. Uh, we have something here called a gateway appliance. So again, there's a couple of um, appliances under here. First of all, there's the uh, the IBM Cloud. Uh, uh, VRA, so virtual router appliance. Uh, 
Uh, and there was also uh, some uh, juniper uh, appliances under here as well. So basically what they do is they, um, they're, they're like a, a gateway entry point to your, uh, to your networking within IBM Cloud. And it then allows you to do more, uh, more enhanced uh, routing of traffic across the different subnets and VLANs that you may have created. Then we have subnets and IP. So if you want to create your own subnets or get your own uh, IP addressing, uh, then you can do that. So you can you can actually uh, order static, public, or private IPs in uh, in in subnets uh, within the cloud. Uh, and with the VLAN service, if you want to actually uh, create your own separate VLANs within IBM Cloud, then you can do that through this service here. Okay, and that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and uh, you've enjoyed watching it. If you have, then please take time to subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified of new videos as, as they come along. But in the meantime, thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.